Yes, sir. Okay. Um, once somebody asked you if they should act or not act on a situation, and you said, do nothing, or do neither. You said, do neither. And that's, I never used the word neither. I used uh, the word neither. <laughs> nothing. Why people use the word neither? <laughs> well, I thought the point was to not even, like, choose to do nothing or to act. I mean, to act or to act, not act. Right. And I was wondering if you could elaborate on that, because that's something that's stuck with me since you've said it. Let's say that uh, you want to move, but you're not sure if you want to move. It's just you're thinking about it. Look like the situation make it look like you should move, but you're not sure. Don't move until you see sure, so you see clearly that you should move. And when you make the move, you're going to make a perfect move. You won't regret it later. Or if you and your wife are fighting, a girlfriend and wife are fighting, and you feel like, you think sometimes, I want to get rid of it. I'm so sick of this woman. I'm just going to leave her. Or I'm not sure if I'm going to leave her. But I'm at this, right? Don't do it. Just stop the fighting. <clears throat> just me. Don't argue with her or anything. And just start quietly working on yourself and the situation will work itself out. Because if you decide to move to break up from her with, on your own, all you will do is run into the same situation. Because you have not grown from it, you have grown into it. Okay. That makes sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah. Human beings are afraid not to make a decision. They are literally afraid not to. And that's why they always feel they have to do something. Last night I was talking to my uncle on the phone, and he asked me, was it wrong for Camilla Harris to run for president? He voted for Camilla. I'm like, no, it was neither wrong nor right. He's like, that's not the answer. I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> she wanted to run, she ran. It's not wrong nor right. And so stop making decisions, you start having a life. And stop practicing, you know, decisions about going to work, what you want for dinner, blah, blah, blah. Is it hard to live without making decisions, doing nothing? Um, I say so, yes. I get, it seems to be a gray line between what is practical and what isn't, I would say. Really? How is that? Well, <laughs> there's certain dilemmas that are not practical but are more moral in a sense, like when you're dealing with people. What's more dealing with people? Like, let's example. say, I, I kind of already know the answer to this, but let, like, <clears throat> say you're like friends are acting in an immoral way or, or doing some evil thing. And you're like, you know, why are they doing this? But I already know that you don't act in that situation. You just watch and you don't judge. And that's been the best outcome for me. Tell, give me an example of a friend acting in an immoral way. Well, let's say like they're smoking pot around you right. and they can't stop. Like maybe they're even like, hey, I got to stop smoking pot. And they're like doing it. Right. And in that situation, it's not like you can force them, I guess. It's kind of up to them how they want to deal with it. With the pot there? Sure. With, with the pot thing. Um, and and what, is, what is moral about that, or immoral? It's immoral to destroy yourself, I guess. How is that? Because it's evil. What's evil about destroying yourself? Because you're not setting yourself straight in the orderly way, the way that God wants you to be. And how is that evil? Because you're setting yourself on a path of destruction when you could be... And, and how does God want you to be? <laughs> how does God want you to be? Um, <laughs> I... I suppose it's not up to us to know that with... Uh, Words, knowledge, really. So then how would you know if the person is setting themselves 
uh, the way God want them to be or not. You wouldn't, it, it's not up to you, I guess, ultimately, right. to decide. And so if somebody's smoking pot, let them smoke pot and have no opinion about it. Can you live a life with no opinion about it? Anything? I can, yes, I think so. Yeah, so if somebody's smoking pot and they offer you some of the pot, you don't want, oh no, thank you, I don't want it. But they want to smoke, let them smoke like a chimney. You right. know what I mean? I know. You're not, you don't have a right to have an opinion about other people's life at all, period. I've completely stopped doing that, yeah. I don't like gossip anymore. You don't gossip anymore? Yeah, I don't, and you I used don't to welcome it. Yeah, when I was in middle school or something, sure. In middle school? <laughs> long, long time ago. Long Little time later. ago. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, so you have no obligation to someone else in their life. You have no, you're not the brother keeper. You have no, somebody want to screw up their life however they want to do it. You should be able to look at it and feel nothing about it, but have no opinion at all about it, period. If you notice, God doesn't, he doesn't care. Yeah. He, he's, not, he's not up there, oh, Lord, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> this person is so wrong. Oh, look, Jesus, look how he's doing it. He just have cafe mocha. And they get up in the morning, and they talk, and Jesus asks the father, what do you want for breakfast? He's like, oh, I want uh, eight bites. <laughs> Bacon bite. <laughs> Bacon bite from Cafe Mocha, right? And yeah. they get coffee, and while he's going to get the coffee, or maybe they have Uber bring it by now. <laughs> Is it called Uber? Joy dad, somebody, and they bring it over now, they don't have to go out. And so they turn the TV on and they look at us and make a fool of ourselves. But they have no opinion about it. Likewise, you should do the same. That makes sense? I understand, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Amazing.